Sonic the Hedgehog. Now that's a name that sparks a lot in your head when you hear it. He's a video game icon and now a successful movie series. He first made his debut in 1991 on the Sega Genesis. This would actually be the very first video game I ever played, and what a glorious way to start. Picture this. I was four years old. I went over to my friend's house. His older sister had a Sega Genesis that we got to play. I remember the opening Sega screen and hearing that beautiful tune I will never forget. My life was forever changed by that defining moment, and in a sense, Jiggy Look Back was born. This is a game character in a lot of ways I felt I grew up with. I had the games, the comics, and loved watching the TV shows, my favorite being the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Even though the character changed, I always had a place for him in my heart. Shoot, the amount of drawings I had proved my obsession. So I owe a lot to Sonic, and even though as of recent memory he's had quite a few stinky poo poo garbage games come out, I'm happy to see Sonic Frontiers take a step in the right direction. I'm always rooting for you, buddy. But for now, I want to place two of my favorite games that shaped my early years. Games that pulled Sonic into the realm of 3D and gave me an experience that would blow my mind almost as much as the original game on Genesis on that fateful day. Fans argue a lot about which one is better, and I thought we'd settle it with a one-on-one -on -one comparison. This is Sonic Adventure versus Sonic Adventure 2. Disclaimer, I will actually be looking at the GameCube versions of these games because that's all I have. I don't have a Dreamcast, just deal with it. So this is technically going to be Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut versus Adventure 2 Battle. We'll take this by topic so we can really break down the elements of these games that are improved or not between the original and sequel. But for the uninitiated, I wanted to give a brief summary of characters and the plot. So let's start with characters. Both games have multiple characters to play and both have unique ones exclusive to that game and others that cross over. I will add little checks to the bottom if they're in only one or in both. Starting off with the man himself, we have Sonic the Hedgehog. He's blue, he's brave, and by golly, he's gotta go fast. Miles Prower, aka Tails, is Sonic's best pal. He's small and flies with his tails, hence his nickname. Knuckles is the echidna with attitude. He's red, and you don't want to get punched by him. Plus, somehow he glides. Amy Rose is a pink hedgehog who loves Sonic. I don't know if it's reciprocated, but probably not. She carries around a giant hammer. Big the Cat is a big cat who likes to fish. His best friend is his frog, who is apparently the only main cast animal that acts like the actual animal it's based off of. E-102Y is a robot with heart, great at shooting. Chaos is a weird, liquidy water creature that protects Xiao and mutates when a Chaos Emerald is presented to him. Her. It. Dr. Eggman is the mainstay Sonic villain. He's been here since the early days when he was still referenced as Dr. Robotnik by everyone. Where did the Eggman thing start? If you know, let me know in the comments. Shadow the Hedgehog is the ultimate life form, a dark version of Sonic, if you will. He's cool, he's edgy, and likes weapons. But not until later installments. Rooch the Bat is a sneaky thief always on the lookout for opportunity to steal treasure and your heart. Then we have a small supporting cast with Tikal and Echidna lost in time, the Chow, you'd better believe we're gonna talk about them soon, and Elmo Chow, a robot Chow who tells us how to do stuff. There are other characters like Maria, Professor Gerald Robotnik, and the President, but None of them are really on screen for long, but just for key plot moments, which we'll talk about later. That's the majority of the main cast. So now let's move on to the plot! Okay, so here's the Cliff Notes version. Sonic Adventure. It focuses around Chaos, the fierce protector of the Chow. Originally, Chaos was the Chow until he was mutated by the strange energy of the Master Emerald. He befriends Tikal, a member of the Echidna tribe. The tribe seeks to use the power of the Chaos Emeralds and tries to take them by force, injuring Tikal. Chaos gets mad, absorbs the negative energy of the Chaos Emeralds, turning into a huge monster and wiping out the tribe. Tikal seals Chaos and herself in the Master Emerald to prevent his rampages. Fast forward in time, Eggman splits the Master Emerald and Knuckles has to piece it back together. Chaos and Tikal are released. Eggman gives Chaos Chaos Emeralds to mutate him into the ultimate weapon to defeat Sonic. In doing so, it gets way out of control and Sonic and friends have to stop Chaos. Chaos mutates into his final form, and Sonic absorbs the positive power of the Emeralds and defeats Chaos. The world is saved. Adventure 2 Eggman tried to recover his grandfather's ultimate weapon in a secret government facility. It's revealed to be Shadow the Hedgehog, who everyone seems to be confusing with Sonic. I don't get it. One's blue, and one is... You know what? Never mind. Whatever. Shadow and Eggman try to get all the Chaos Emeralds, and Sonic is blamed for Shadow's crimes. Tails save Sonic from imprisonment, and they go after Shadow and Eggman. And while this is happening, Knuckles and Rouge are looking for the Master Emerald pieces because Knuckles broke it to stop Eggman from taking it. 
Eventually, it's revealed that Gunn, a government agency, raided Gerald's space fortress. Yeah, space fortress. And ended up destroying everything, including Gerald himself and his granddaughter Maria, who was Shadow's only and best friend. Shadow then vows to destroy the world with vengeance, only to later have a change of heart and try to stop what he triggered when he remembered Maria wanted him to protect the world and give them a chance to be happy. Shadow and Sonic then go super and have to fight Gerald's prototype ultimate life form, which is a giant lizard, to stop the space colony arc fortress thing from crashing into the planet. Factoring in the plots actually both have pretty unique and interesting stories, but there's only one winner, and the reality is only one of these games has Shadow. Point to Adventure 2. Now that we have the basic plots, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of it. Types of gameplay. Let's start with Adventure. In Sonic Adventure, you have six characters to play as. We'll start from the top and work our way around as each character has a unique way to play. Starting with Sonic. Sonic controls really well. He's obviously super fast and you get a feel for momentum when you go down hills or resistance when you go up one. You'll see a lot of dash pads strategically placed in these sections to help you get up things. Sonic has his staple move here with the spin dash. You can hold the button down or as I appreciate in Sonic Adventure, you can tap the button really fast and you'll do a sort of dash and run thing and you can get fast real quick. I was always zipping around. In addition, this is the first game to introduce Sonic's homing attack, the legendary move that has stuck with him since in all his 3D incarnations, and some 2D. There's no lock-on indicator like a lot of you new Sonic game fans are used to. You just take a leap of faith and trust that you're going to hit your target. Once you get a feel for it, it actually works really well. The other thing Sonic gets in his stages are these pads that he can stand on and if you press the jump button, you'll be launched to another. It's a cool little visual thing and works well. Sonic's stages are very high speed, get to the finish sections. Very reminiscent of his original game, where you have to jump on the switch to set animals free. You'll find lots of springs, dash pads, and loop-de-loops. That covers Sonic, now let's move on to Sonic's little buddy Tails. Tails is actually fairly fast too, although not as fast as Sonic. The animation of his tail spinning behind him as he starts moving is awesome. He can do a tail whip attack instead of spin dash, although he can get into spin dash form when going down hills and such. The big difference is Tails can fly for a brief period. This allows him to find shortcuts in stages and lets you get creative, which is very helpful because his stages function as races between him and Sonic. It's a fun, slightly different take over Sonic's stage. Moving to Knuckles. His gameplay functions around him doing these treasure hunting stages. You have all Knuckles' typical moves. He can run, glide, and climb on things. He can also dig and punch. You follow this emerald radar that changes color and beeps faster and faster as you get closer to the piece of the emerald. First it's blue, with slow beeps, and then green that gets faster. Then yellow, even faster than that, and then, like a pink, and then finally, it's red hot! These stages break up the fast gameplay and promote exploration. It's a nice changeup. Now Amy Rose. Amy's stages are all about her escaping from a green robot. She runs away as it chases her and you do some basic platforming puzzles and use your hammer to attack enemies or do this fun flippy jump thing. And eventually you find a balloon we grab and can escape the robot. That's about it. She's got pretty basic moves. Big the cat. We go fishing. Specifically for Froggy. It's fine. Big can swim, float, and sink to the bottom of the water. We aim to cast and then we can reel in slow or fast. E102Y. We have these third person shoot em up stages where we do some minor platforming, can glide with a jet, and we aim and shoot everything in sight. Moving on to Adventure 2. We have three styles of play for another six characters. These three styles are carried over from Adventure but were refined and enhanced. Basically, Adventure cuts Big's fishing, Amy's escape stages, and plays Tails in a mech to give us the speed sections where we play as Sonic and Shadow moving fast to the end, the treasure hunting sections where we play as Rouge or Knuckles, and the shoot 'em up stages where we play as Tails or Dr. Eggman. The gameplay of this game, although simplified and condensed versus Adventure 1, offers us faster stages that play better than before. And although both games have great gameplay that's fairly similar, I just feel that Sonic Adventure 2 took the formula, refined it, and gave us something that is more consistently good. But it did remove Sonic's quick spin dash button spamming, which is disappointing to me. I also don't like how Tails was limited to a mech, he was actually really fun to play as an adventure. There's something about flying around that I really enjoyed, and the variety of Adventure's full cast and the unique gameplay. Even though the basic gameplay is faster and better in Adventure 2, Adventure 1 wins with its sheer variety and more unique gameplay styles. Plus, being able to fast spin dash over and over is awesome. Point to Adventure, because we gotta go fast. Level design. Adventure 1 and 2 had wildly different approaches to their level structure. Adventure 1 gave us large hub worlds where we could go and search for the next level, often having to solve small puzzles to get into them. Adventure 2 just progressed level to level automatically and played cutscenes after each one, more straightforward and didn't require exploration. As much as I think the hub world was a cool idea, Adventure 1 just didn't nail the concept. 
They're pretty empty, and you'll find yourself thinking, where the heck am I supposed to go? There's probably a reason it was removed from 2. I think not having a hub world is a point for Adventure 2. The actual levels themselves both rock, honestly. But if I had to choose, I think I'd side with Adventure 2 because the levels are just way more iconic. Although both are great, just look at how Adventure 2 starts off. It didn't get much better than this. It has everything you want. Start us off with that bopping track, a cool sequence on a piece of the helicopter we just escaped from. It hits hard. Compare this to the way Adventure starts. A quick boss battle honestly isn't very hard. I'll admit, introducing Chaos is intriguing and looks cool, but come on, this is Sonic. We want to get in and get moving right away. Adventure 2 understood that, and that carries over for most of the level design. A lot of fast-paced levels like White Jungle and even Pumpkin Hill for treasure hunting. While Adventure has its moments like Speed Highway, Adventure 2 just does it better and way more often. I will say though that the shooting levels aren't my favorite, but honestly they don't outstay their welcome. And they're in Adventure as well anyways. I'm giving this point to Adventure 2. Chow. I know it sounds silly, but to anyone who loves these games, it's probably because of Chow. I spent a huge amount of my childhood raising these little guys. The Chow Garden is so fleshed out, it's like a pet simulator RPG within the game. You raise stats of your Chow using animals and these weird things, I don't really know what they are, but you get them from robots. Then your Chow mutates depending on what you give it, and you can enter it into Chow competitions. And sometimes, in Adventure 2, depending on the character you used, your Chow actually mutates to look like that character, which is awesome to me. Honestly, Adventure did it great, but Adventure 2 just added way more to it. In Adventure, you had a few gardens that you had to navigate to from the hub, but in Adventure 2, you get to the Chow Gardens by collecting keys within a level, and then after the level, it sends you there. You can spend as much time as you want. Adventure 2 also gives you three gardens, one normal, one light, and one dark, but you work to unlock them. I just love this so much. It's an absolute blast to raise Chow and then have them compete in competitions to test their stats and see how they perform. In Adventure, you only had races, but in Adventure 2, you have races, karate, as well as the Chow Kindergarten, which allowed you to teach your Chow special skills, among other various things. In both versions, there's actually a black market, too, where you can get funny accessories for your Chow. Look at this watermelon I put on this one. Why Sega hasn't brought the Chow Garden back, I don't understand, because everyone wants it. There's even an opportunity to make a cool mobile game out of it, like Pokemon Go. I mean, I'd play it. Come on, Sega. Come on, Sonic Team. What are you doing? Alright, now if you watched my Kazooie vs. Tui video, which you should, and if you haven't, you can click up here, and there it is. You know, I really didn't give points to the sequel for adding more stuff, because that's what sequels do. But the Chow Garden went from being an extra thing in the game, to a full-fledged game within a game. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give the points to Sonic Adventure 2, for sure. Graphics and glitches. Why am I including this? Well, both games have some pretty silly things going on, but let's take a look at them. Generally, I prefer the look of 2. The characters seem to mesh better with the world, where in Adventure 1, they kind of look... plasticky, if that makes sense. This could be better in the original Dreamcast version, but from what I see, it doesn't really seem that way. Adventure 2 must have really just learned from the first game and made the models much better. I'm playing the remakes and I still prefer Adventure 2 style. Graphics point for Adventure 2. Now, Adventure 2 had some pretty silly dialogue things happen, though. When characters are talking in a cutscene, there are times when they just start talking over each other, I think this is because when they dubbed over the Japanese with English, they say more than before, so it was hard to get it all in the amount of time that they had. It just comes across really silly. Adventure 2 is also loaded with glitches. However, I loved finding these as a kid. I, yeah, like today, glitches are a bad thing, but back then, glitches were everything to me. I remember this one specific glitch that I could trigger in the Chow Garden, and I pulled it off for you guys. Just check it out. This is awesome. I love this stuff. Nothing was ever game-breaking, just quirky, and honestly, I miss things like this. It was always fun with me and my friends trying to find these glitches. Adventure 1 didn't have as many glitches as far as I can remember. Granted, this is the re-release, so they may have fixed a lot of things. But what it does have is laughable. Look at these cutscenes. Look at their mouths. What the heck is going on? These make every cutscene so silly. It's like a cheap kung fu movie. No! It's like a cheap parody of a kung fu movie. It's laughable. But, at least as far as I remember, they didn't overlap dialogue, which to me is way worse. I'm going to give the point to Adventure 1. Now one final thing I want to talk about is the music. Okay, so here's something that people really will argue about. Adventure 1's opening is amazing. The level themes are just incredible and memorable, but when it comes down to it, Adventure 2's just perfect. Some of the tracks from this game are so iconic they stand alone. 
I mean, the main themes we can argue about all day because they both slap, honestly. But if you start the game and get hit with City Escape, and that's just the beginning? We all must follow our rainbow, and mine was leading me to Sonic Adventure 2 soundtrack being superior, so point to Adventure 2. Now that we have all our points, we tallied up, and the end result is no surprise. Adventure 2 wins. In the end, although both games are great, you should definitely play both if you haven't, Adventure 2 took what one did, made it even better in just about every way. From the gameplay to the music, things got cranked up to 11. Well, that's all I have for you. But wait! Before you go, please smack that like button so this video gets spread around, punch subscribe, and also ding that bell. And you have earned my affection, okay? Okay, I love you. Bye.